Okay, so it's looking good. So there's a, a mix of numbers here, you know. I'm looking at the screen. Some people say it takes about half an hour, some 45 minutes, but the majority is around the half an hour. Some people say 60 minutes. This is looking good. This is looking good. All right. Let's now take a look at liver transplantation. So there are two schools of thoughts here. First of all, we're looking at you know live living donors. We look at two types of cross sections. You normally do a ported venous post contrast scan. Then we need to go back and segment the volumes of the of the actual lobes of each individual lobe of the liver. Then we need to look at the vasculature, is there any anomalies? Then we need to look at the volumes of each one. If there were a lesion that we found as an incidental, which lesion do we cut out? We look at the volume that we're going to actually transplant back into the patient, and we look at the rate of survival for both transplanted and donor for liver imaging. So if you have a look here, we have two lines, you have two red lines. Here, the dotted left line here separates the second and the third lobe, and this is good when we want to take out uh, liver parenchyma and transplant it into a patient. The beauty of the liver organ, it can regenerate itself. It can grow quite quickly and uh, very fast, and it allows for strong correlation between successful uh, tra um, transplants into live patients. Additionally, if there were tumors, if you look at this solid line, we need to understand the anatomical pathways, the arterial venous, so you have two venous supplies to the liver. We need to look at the hepatic veins draining back into the inferior vena cava and the portal system coming into uh, the liver, which is filtering blood from the mesentery. So if you have a look here, it becomes quite complex to actually look at all of these structures. So in my time, when we asked that poll before, it takes me sometimes 60 minutes to quantify each lobe of the liver, look at vasculature supply in and out of the liver, and more importantly, look at volumes and successions. And if there was a lesion, this now increased my workload to about one and a half hours. So what happens now is, let's just take a look at currently what our workflow is. Right here, if you took a look at the top right-hand corner, I can actually see this is a typical angiogram, a liver CTA, where I can look at the celiac axis. Right here, I can see the pancreatoduodenal artery, and there is a collateral blood supply if you follow the green arrows going all the way to the splenic artery. Now, there is a lot of collateral blood supply to the splenic artery. However, if the surgeon went in there and cut that out, the chances of survival of that spleen would be reduced, one. Two, because there is a collateral blood supply, there's going to be microscopic blood vessels supplying the, the liver parenchyma. So what's even more important, we're not just looking at the celiac axis when we're looking at the arterial anatomy. We also look, need to look at the superior mesenteric artery. You will always have collateral blood supply, whether significant or not, whether correlative or not, which supplies the liver when we're looking at organ transplantation. Then, if they did the arterial phase, then we go down, if you look at the image below, we see the draining hepatic veins into the inferior vena cava. We see the portal vein coming from the mesentery and going into the liver. And this becomes a very tough and tedious process in order to actually show all of this information. So I need to scroll through each one of these images in three phases to look at all this information. However, the beauty of this is, and I'll ask Annika now to let me demonstrate to you live liver segmentation using the IntelliSpace portal. So something that used to take me an hour and a half, I now am able to do something within one click. And this is instantaneous. I do not have to rely now on my junior radiology residents to go and do the workup. I can now confidently do it myself through one click of a button. I don't have to wait for anybody. And I have full access to this information instantaneously, anywhere, anytime, at any place in the world. So if we have a look here now, so the liver is now being segmented. So if you have a look here, the image here on your top left-hand corner, as I scroll down, I can actually see two different colors. 
I can see my portal system, I can see my hepatic system. But look at this. I've just found now an incidental lesion. If I look across here to my right hand side, automatically it populates into 3D. What's more important for this surgeon is this. The middle, the left, the middle and the and the sorry, the left, the middle and right hepatic veins do not share a common origin. So now we're actually going to change the treatment and surgical outcome for this patient. I can now show you exactly the total lung, the total liver volume that I have within this patient. But hold on one sec now that we've found this lesion, I now need to make new changes. I need to know which segments of the liver are affected and how much volume of liver I can cut out. So now I just go now to, I just do one more click of a button. If I wanted to, I can look at my findings. Okay, I can now go and add in this tumor very simply just through one click and automatically it actually gives me the volume of that lesion. Now that I know it's 7.4 millimeters, I don't worry about the lesion. I worry about the lesion relative to the lobe of the liver and how much liver I'm now going to have to cut out. This was a transplant. Now this will change to either be a surgical or radiofrequency ablation or chemoembolization procedure. So through one click of a button now, I'll go to liver segmentation. I can now segment every single liver. Now depending on which segment I want to use, I can use the two segment, the four segment, the eight segment, which is the conoid, or the nine segment bismuth. I can, depending on the surgeon, he will come to me and say, Charval, I need to know this lesion in which segment it is. I now can actually take another ligament, another click as well, and look at segmentation guidance. If I'm unsure, or if I give this to a junior radiology resident, it will tell me exactly where to place my points, because it can be quite complex. So I don't need to be there every step of the way. I have now this software and this advanced processing system can do this for me. So I'm now present at each individual workstation, wherever they are, without me physically being, him, being next to him side by side. What's interesting now is, I want to just take a look at this lesion that we actually highlighted. If, I, if you look at the image here on the right hand side, I'm now going to zoom it up. I can turn around this lesion, I can say, okay, this lesion now is confined to a single lobe. So now if I go from superior to inferior, has it crossed between the anterior or the posterior lobe? It has not. So, radi so radiologically, I can now see exactly where this lesion is located. And this is all through one single click. The hours and the time that I used to spend on this was phenomenal and frustrating. I don't have to worry about system crashes. I don't have to save state every 10 minutes. If I need to get an urgent consult on another patient, all of this now has been relieved and it's gone just through one click of a button. So now, if we have a look at this ligma segment, I can now go into surgical planning or interventional planning. So if I go into surgical planning now and say, okay, we've decided we want to cut this lesion out, automatically I can actually now see this lesion where it is. But I need to make sure also the lesion is not a lesion in itself. I need to look at the tumor bed. Radiologically, the tumor bed becomes very difficult to see. So if I click onto a safety margin, which is usually 10 millimeters, it has now progressed into the second lobe. So if I rotate this image now, I now am looking at the lesion here, there's the tumor bed. I now need to take out the two lobes, superior and inferior, anteriorly and posteriorly, but there's still no effect inferiorly. This is the beauty of this now. We can now do partial uh, liver section. We can either give this a surgical approach or we can actually go through and do this through radio frequency ablation. And also another beautiful thing about this is this is far away from the actual vessels. So if I actually want to start burning this lesion, I'm not going to cause vascular compromise. And what's even more important now, I can now remove segments if I want to. So if I just click here, I can remove this segment and this segment, and automatically, I've now got this information 
where I say, okay, I've removed these segments because these are the segments I'm going to, I'm going to cut out, but the software tells me I have now cut out 40% of the liver. I can still function normally if I cut up to 60% of my liver, but now I have accurate tumor volume, tumor resection relative to vessels, liver parenchyma resection. So now I'll ask Anika to take me to the next section where we'll talk about trans-arterial valve implants.